Hey, welcome back everybody, this is Muth24, and this is part two of my review of the Masquerade Exia. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the first part of the review is that the LED lights that you get with both the ignition mode of this kit and the uh, 00 Master Grade you can use on the single GN drive they give you here. Uh, the one thing that I should note with this GN drive though is it's very hollow and very flimsy. Uh, you can basically put the LED right in there. Um, but the thing is, if you bump pretty much anything on this uh, GN drive, the little clear piece here, the bit on the back here, it will just kind of cave in on itself, and it's a little annoying. It's not that hard to get back to, uh, you know, its proper state, but they really could have put, like, two more plastic pieces in here, and it would have just been fine uh, staying in place with everything there. Uh, I don't know why they didn't design it that way, because... Uh, it's, it's really easy to see, like, when you're building it, how they could have fixed it, and they just didn't. So, for the sake of this posability part, I'm going to just remove that from the back. Uh, the little clamps that hold it in, these side ones work just fine. This bottom one is super flimsy and doesn't really do anything, so that's a little annoying. But uh, the head will go up and down just fine. And when you sort of lay these yellow uh, bits on the neck down, the head can rotate 360 if you give it a little push. Uh, it does lack the chicken bob, though, which is interesting, because most of the newer Master Grades have that in there, uh, one way or another. The arms will go up about that far, uh, which I think is decent, given the fact that you have sort of this tape material there, uh, and the chest does go with it well enough. Uh, it doesn't really go down further, though, so you're going to have it sort of just flat against the side like that. Um, you can get the shoulder to rotate 360 no problem. You can get the arm to rotate 360 right there. You can get the elbow to bend basically flush against the arm there. And then you have the uh, very traditional three finger trigger finger thumb split on the hand. The hands can more or less rotate uh, you know 360 there. It, they'll bump up against the uh, little gauntlet piece there so you can't do a, th a true 360, but you can get them to go far enough around that's not that big of a deal anyways. Uh, and then there is a joint there at the palm that will allow it to sort of go in and out as such. The torso uh, sort of has like a little track mechanism here that allows it to sort of jump back and forth like that. Uh, it's not that... I guess, free to, to move about. Uh, it only does so much there, but it is nice to, you know, have them sort of leaning one way or the other. Uh, and then the actual, like, waist joint uh, will allow, well, the stomach, first of all, will allow them to go back and forth there. Uh, and then the waist will sort of allow them to rock around and uh, rotate side to side a little bit. Can't go 360 just because of the, not the back skirt itself, but the, uh, like, butt armor piece there is so high up that it won't allow it to go all the way. Uh, but you can get some decent posability there out of the torso. The cockpit does open up nicely. It doesn't always close the best, but I found it does close better now that I built the whole thing. When I was when I was building it um, and didn't have all the lower torso constructed, it didn't want to stay shut for some reason, which is weird. I don't know why that was the case, but now it seems to stay pretty well shut. It's not completely flush against the uh, little green circle piece there, but uh, it's decently closed. As far as the skirt armor goes, uh, it can go up about that far and sort of wobble back and forth. It does have a tendency to pop off, not the whole piece, just this uh, little exterior whitish gray. The back skirt armor is a lot more flexible and a lot more loose. And then, of course, you have the beam sabers that can come up like that and display outwards, and then you have them on the back of the shoulders here, too. Uh, I find that these ones are held in a lot better. They get a lot more tight connection than the ones on the shoulders because you can have them up like that and they'll stay just fine. The ones on the shoulders, you pick them up and then you know shake a little bit and they'll fall down. It's, it's actually, I think, more of a problem on this side than it is on the other side. But um, either way, the, the skirt armor uh, beam saber handles seem to hold their position better. The legs can go out about that far can go forward about that far, kind of goes out to the side just because of the way the skirt armor's uh, designed, and can really only go back about uh, that far because the back skirt armor won't lift up that much. 
you can get it to bend at the knee. Not quite 180, but a decent amount. Uh, and you got this cool sort of mechanical look with stuff, you know, adjusting there. You get a little bit of a uh, flip here on the uh, ankle armor. The feet can swivel back and forth. And then the toe has like a double joint here, uh, which can make for some cool dash poses. And then you can get to go, you know, front to back, no problem. Rotate 360, no problem, because the ankle uh, armor doesn't come down all that much. Now, the thing that I did notice when I was building this kit, even before I had it completely finished, was that the upper torso joints, everything in the arms, in the chest, in the shoulders, in the head, is a lot more tight than the lower torso. The legs tend to splay out a little bit more. Uh, the feet are not the best designed. Uh, the thing that bothered me a little bit with the double O was the fact that the feet were adequately long front to back, but not wide enough to really hold up the weight that well. And so it wasn't a huge deal with that one because I was going to display it on action base, um, but for someone who's just going to you know set it on their shelf and have it stand there, it might have been a bit of an issue. With the XE, it's the opposite. The feet are wide enough to support it, but not long enough front to back. And it's just really weird that the joints there are so loose on the feet and the ankles and the legs as a whole, because this is a very much a ground-based mobile suit. You know, you see it in the show, uh, it's, it's dashing around, it's doing all sorts of cool melee stuff. A lot of the first season of Gun Rebel O takes place on Earth, and so for the sake of posing it, I don't know why they wouldn't have the legs be more tight uh, than they are. It's one thing that kind of baffles me with some of the newer Master Grades is that occasionally you'll have one where the joints are so loose that you can't have the weapons hold up that well, you can't have it stand that well, and it's just really weird that we still have some of these problems, you know, nowadays. I mean, I realize this kit came out a few years back, but even so, it's a pretty newish Master Grade. It's following the newer Master Grade style and everything, uh, and it's just weird to have an issue like that uh, so prominent. As for the weapons and accessories, though, you do get one uh, really cool tree of plastic, which is actually molded in a shiny metallic color, and you use that for uh, all of the blades. And I think it's a really nice touch. They didn't have to do that, and I actually wasn't expecting it to be that case, um, that when I got out of the box it, it looked that nice, because uh, I was planning on painting it, but honestly I don't feel the need to, because it's got this really cool sort of gunmetal finish to it. And then here are the other GN blades. You have the longer one and the shorter one. And again, they have that sort of shiny metallic look to them. And then the shield, pretty standard blue and white. Uh, you can panel line the vents and stuff there to give it a little bit of a uh, more detailed look, but doesn't require a whole lot of effort to make it look good. And that's the thing with all these accessories is that they are uh, built with very minimal pieces but they don't weigh that much, so it's kind of nice that, you know, you can you can build these things quick and easy. Uh, a lot of times with Master Grade kits, the weapons and accessories take a decent amount of time after you build the mobile suit. Um, with these ones, they're done really fast. On the sides of the legs at the waist here, you can pull out these little white pieces, and if you're careful enough, the cap won't pop off. I haven't had really any problems with that, uh, but you can flip this little uh, joint up here, and it's just, just a simple ball joint. There's nothing really complex about the GM blades, and you just pop them in there, and it'll hang nicely. And uh, this is one attachment that I had a little bit of a gripe with the high grade because it didn't stay that well. These ones hold just fine. For the beam sabers, you get both the short dagger look and the long full beam saber, and you get two of each of these. And you can pop them into the uh, beam saber handles easy enough. And I like the fact that with these double O uh, beam sabers for the Exia here. Uh, they're sort of this flat but pointed look. It's it's very different and very cool looking and sort of stands out among all of the other more rounded beam sabers that you have with literally every other Gundam. I mentioned in the first part that you get a little stand for the GN drive, uh, and while it's kind of an interesting little addition, there's not a whole lot to it. It's just sort of this clear plastic piece, but it is nice if you want to put the red cap there on the back and not have to worry about this thing, you know, collapsing on itself and you just want to splay it with the GN uh, drive lit up there. As per Master Raid tradition, you do get a little pilot figure of Setsuna and a unique action base connector piece. 
And then for both the shield and the sword, what we're going to have are these little divots inside the arm where the uh, connection piece is going to rest. And then for the sword itself, you have a peg on the hand as per usual. I didn't have too much trouble with it when I first built it, uh, but the more I've attached the weapons to it, the more I find that the arm here uh, just doesn't hold the sword up all that well. It just tends to droop down after a while. It actually holds it up in that sort of a pose decent enough, uh, but if you try and put it like out like that, it's just going to droop straight down uh, like you just saw. And it's also sort of an issue is that you try and have it out stretched like it's you know, going to dash and attack something, is where the weight issues really come into play. Uh, the legs will sort of just start leaning one way and it'll just fall over. Um, and it's doing all right right now with the blade just forward like that, but I think it's because it has the shield and the blades on the back to sort of offset it. And the fact that this thing, the torso weight is pretty well centered and actually put a little bit to the back, just so that it does kind of counteract that, but still, the fact that the leg joints are so loose uh, is a big hit against this kit for me. Putting the light in the GM drive here is definitely a little cool feature if you have one from the Double or if you bought one just for this kit. But uh, with that single sort of circle around, it definitely doesn't give off quite as uh, prominent a glow as the Double O does with all of its little uh, light-up bits. So on the plus side, the Masquerade Exia does look nice. The way the plastic's molded over itself, uh, the way the thing is just designed aesthetically is very pleasing. Uh, and you're not going to be paying much for it either. It's only a 3,800 yen kit. However, that very much shows in sort of the really just lazy designs that some of the joints have. Uh, the fact that this thing's blade can't be properly displayed, and that's the main gimmick, the main appeal of this suit, is to have that huge sword is a massive disappointment. Now there are some ways you can kind of adjust to accommodate for that, uh, putting the joints in just the right ways to have it stick up, uh, but the fact that the legs are so poorly constructed uh, means that the smaller GM blades and the beam savers and stuff uh, also are going to sort of suffer in terms of the way you can pose them uh, because of the way the legs are just designed and don't stand up that well. So at the end of the day, I think the sum of the parts of this kit are probably better than the high grade. Uh, but it's really nothing to write home about. When you're going to pose this thing, you're either going to have it in super awkward positions or you're just going to have it in sort of a flat, boring stance pose. And uh, it's a little unfortunate. I mean, you're not forking over much for this kit, but you're also not going to get quite as much out of it as you would with other Master Grades. If you really like the Exia's design, I think you're going to be pleased with the way this thing looks, uh, just in terms of its design. But it's also going to be very limited in what you can do with it. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this review, and with that, I will see you guys next time.